Hello, it's Ryan Gordon, part 17, here we go. Um, so I figured that today we would try and put together a big feature and try to do it as fast as possible so we're not sitting here for four hours, but um, let's see how far we get and we'll just go from there and see what happens. Um, so I talked about this before, this is uh, the title bar, which is the title bar texture, bitmap, whatever, and we have in here uh, you know, read the readme, which we're not going to do. We're just going to wing it. Um, this is your title bar for your window when you're focused and when you're not focused. And this one down here is Easter egg stuff, which we'll get to at some point, I guess. But these two in the middle are window shade mode. And what that looks like, Internet Archive Winamp Skins. Here we go. Looks like I'm just going to pick a random one here. Oh, they're all so pretty. All right, let's just do this one. This is fine. Um, it, lots of windows that we haven't gotten to yet, but uh, window shade mode is instead of this whole interface, you just have bloop, one little tiny title bar with all your controls on it for the most part. And um, it's for people that really, really need the screen real estate. So let's see here. Let's try and implement that today as fast as we can. Shall we? Yes, I think so. Good. Okay. Where were we here? Let's see. So if we're going to do this, we need a couple of things. First and foremost, we're going to need, in our Winamp skin, we're going to need to change an assumption here. Right now we have our textures, which we load for it, and we have a list of buttons and sliders, but we're going to need a different set of buttons here. We'll call these windshade buttons. And these happen to all match, I think, for the most part. You know play, previous, pause, all these buttons are on there, so we'll just have a totally separate copy of these buttons, which are, you know, uh, you know, going to be positioned differently than they would be for up here, and will be used differently. Now, there's only one slider in this thing, so we're not going to have an array for that. We'll call this wind shade position slider, because you can use that to move the thing around. We'll get to that. Um, and, of course, we're going to need to have a flag here to tell us that we are wind shade. I'm going to say wind shader a lot by accident because the word shader falls out of my mouth about 17,000 times a day. You're just going to have to deal with that. I'm going to be hitting backspace a lot. Wind shade mode. So when this magic true false value is toggled, then we're going to treat the whole thing differently, including how we draw it and how we uh, interact with it. But that'll get us started for now. Okay, I think that's probably all we need for now. And changes to that. But now we gotta load all these things up. Where'd my thing go? This is everyone's favorite part, where we look at more pixel positions in the stupid bitmaps. I'm sorry, I know everyone loves this. We'll go through it as fast as we can. Normal window mode. Total separate one of these wind shade mode. All right, so most of these are going to be the same. So let's just copy and paste down here. Position sliders, wind shade mode. Okay, yeah, let's just do it. So these won't be skin buttons. These will be skin wind shade buttons. And we have all the same buttons here. So we'll just oops, tap in there. Back. Where'd you go? Okay, there we go. And then we have one slider, which is the wind shade. What is it called? Thing position slider or something like that. All right. So we'll deal with that in a moment. Now all of these uh, are in. They're not in the C buttons thing. That's just for the main interface. They're all. Every one of these is in the title bar texture because they're built into the thing. And this is worth noting. Lots and lots of things... It's also in the title bar. Yeah, okay. Lots and lots of things in Winamp have buttons in two states. Like there's pushed and there it's unpushed. It's pushed down there and it's unpushed there. Whichever it is, these two here. Um, these buttons here do not have a pushed and unpushed state. They only exist in one state. Um, it just cares when you've clicked on this area. It treats it as a button, but there's no like animating effect to it. So. To deal with that here, we're just going to have the same coordinates for 
when it's pushed and unpushed. It'll just draw the same thing, no matter how the mouse is treating it. Um, before we get to that, I just realized we only have system minimize and close here. We need one more window button on even the main window, where we had minimize. This is not maximize, this is window shade. We've skipped this for now, this is not initialized. And close, so let's get this dude in here real quick, because we're gonna need him. Let's see, let's figure out how big are you? You are nine by nine, of course. Let's figure out positions of things here. Let's see, from the beginning of the title bar to here. Just, come on, dude, get up there. There we go. Zoom in a little more. Okay, deal with that in a moment. Let's see, so minimize, minimize. We'll call this wind shade. Adding a new button, wind shader. Um, which, you know, since these these uh, arrays down here are all just this thing total, the array just gets bigger because I added another element to it. just does that by default, which is kind of fun. Okay, so let's go initialize that so we have that button. If I can figure out where I did that. As usual, I'm going to need to copy this down here because I cannot remember all 20,000 arguments to this. Because this is just meant to be a constructor thing. It's not meant to be anything... That you have to memorize. All right, so we have our button calling it windshade. It's in the title bar. We'll call this windshade clicked. The function will call when you click that thing. We know the height and the width is nine by nine because we already did this. The destination thing here is I just 254, so it's 10 pixels over from the one before it. And I have this as three down, but is that actually true? Yeah, it is true. Three. Okay, cool. We like that. Okay, so it's three down. When it's... Yeah, it's that many over, that many down. And then we're doing where it, the button is when it's pressed. Which is this dude over here. Wait, which one is windshade? It's this guy. So that would be... These are nine by nine also. Okay, it's at the left-hand side and 18 pixels down. So x would be 0, 18 down, and then the one next to it is the push down version of it, which is um, same thing, but 9 pixels over, 9 pixels over 18 across. Okay, cool. And that's it. That's all I need to do. Now that button's just going to magically work, which is pretty great. Oh, except i got to write this function, windshade clicked. Minimize click, we'll do it right here, right below this. Void, windshade click. You know, it's funny, I was listening to a, a talk that Rob Pike, who was one of the early Unix pioneers, was giving. And when they were updating the ANSI, uh, the, um, the C programming language book, uh, the K&R book for an the ANSI C edition of it, uh, someone pointed out that you weren't meant to have functions like this anymore. Functions with no arguments then had to have void. and uh, he was talking about how horrified uh, Ken Thompson or Dennis Ritchie, whichever one it was, was, was by that fact. Because, like, why? Why wouldn't you just do that? That makes more sense. But that's the language we have, so void. Although I think in modern times and ancient times, too, you could do this, and it would work. It definitely works in C++. Your mileage may vary on C compilers. Anyway, so when you click the windshade button, we want to do two things here. We want to say skin, which is a global variable. Yep, there it is, skin. We want to turn on windshade mode. Let's go, come back here. There you go. Skin, windshade mode equals SD equal true. And then we want to change the size of the window too. So SDL set window size. Window is a global variable we set up earlier too. And it is, what was it? That's our size when it's not window shade mode. So that's not going to do much good for us. These title bars are 14 large. Let me see. Maybe 14. Yeah, okay, so it's still just as wide, but it's only 14. So going from 116 pixels to 14, 100 and, uh, 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 what was it, 116? So that's like a massive, like 102 pixel savings on that to go to that. Um, not too shabby.
So, okay, that's all you have to do. That'll, when you call this function, SDL will make the window that size. And then the next time you draw it, it'll have, which happens frequently, it'll do the window shade thing when we set that up. Now let's do another function here too, just unwind shade, click, and then we'll go back to our, was it 12, did I say 12 before? 102, I don't know, I can't do math, who knows, whatever it was. Yeah, 116, okay, fine. It's late at night, I don't know if you can see the clock at the top of my screen here, it's past my bedtime. So I'm gonna make mistakes on silly math here. Okay, so we set the function to click, a uh, function that runs when you click the windshade thing in regular thing, and then we have a separate one for this. Oh, come back. Separate one for when you unwindshade it, which will be what the, when you hit the same button when it's in windshade mode. We'll call that. So we're going back to that, and that'll just change the window size and th the magic state, which we'll use for everything else. Um, okay, so let's set up our buttons now. So, ta -ba 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 -ba. that's all set up there. Cool. Let's add that, so we shouldn't need to do anything else to the main interface. Let's, um, uh, let's set up these buttons for the windshade mode version of this. Okay, so the system button is probably in the same place. I'm gonna say yes, probably it is. Yeah, all of these are in the same place except that button's going to be different, so we'll deal with that. Um, oh yeah, we need to add a windshield button down here too. Okay, so system and minimize are in the same place, use the same buttons, call the same functions, it works the same, it's no big deal. Uh, we'll call that unwindshade clicked, because we're going to be in windshade mode, we want a different function to run when we click that. Button's the same size, button has the same destination, has a different button you hit though. So let's find that real quick. So this is what the windshade button looks like and this is what the unwindshade button looks like. So so this is still, I assume, nine by nine and it's 27 instead of, because we're bumping down by nine for each of these. So same position, zero, yes, yeah, zero, 27 and then nine, 27. Okay, so now we have our windshade and unwindshade buttons are all hooked up there. We just have to hook all these up, because these are all in drastically different places in windshade mode. So this is going to be a little measuring stuff in GIMP to get this to work. So, But otherwise, as you can see, the same functions. These buttons all work the same once you have um, once you have the, the, the thing set up to click them correctly. They do this. They operate the same way. All right, let's start measuring these out, I guess. Okay, previous. And also, some of these are still not hooked up, but we can hook them up in the UI even if they don't do anything. We'll get around fixing that later. All right, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so this is eight by 10. A little smaller, a little wider, that's interesting. All right, close but wait, no, not close. I'm on the wrong one. That would be bad. Okay, it's eight, very small, much smaller. Eight by 10, I think I said that was, right? Yeah, and it is, I get two things here, the destination, where it will be in this title bar, which will be from there to, oh man, Ryan, okay, do that again. Come on, scroll on over, dude, there you go. This can go. We wanna know what that corner is, basically. All right, so this is only two from the top of the title bar, tiny title bar, you only have 14 pixels to work with, and it's 168 over, so. All right, so the destination on this one, eight by 10, it'll be 100 and 168, two, and then we have to find these things, and I promise this is gonna go faster after this first one. All right, the source thing, now these do not have separate magic buttons, it's just the art that's in this title bar already, so. And there is no pressed and unpressed, so its position is 195, 31, and then same thing again, 195, 31. Okay, fun, fun, fun. Now I'm just going to copy and paste these magic numbers to the next one because these things are all going to be related. So let's just try and knock them out as we go. Okay, so the play button 
is a different size, which is super obnoxious. This one is 10 by 10 instead of 8 by 10. I guess, you know, it's bigger. You want to have those extra two pixels to hit the thing you really want to hit, right? So, okay, so it's width and height is 10 by 10. Now, I'm not going to measure these out because we know that the last one started at 168 pixels and it was 8 pixels wide and nothing else has changed because we're moving from left to right. So we just have to do 168 plus 8, which is math I can't do at this time of night, 176, and still the same destination. And then this, the source number would move over by 8 also, which would make it 203 and 203. So this is going to go faster since we can do this. That's good. Hopefully. This will go faster and I don't screw it up. All right, so our next one is paused, which is uh, smaller. This one's nine. They're all a different size. I love it. It's my favorite thing. All right, and this one was 10, so we just have to bump by that, and then bump by that, and then bump by that. Okay. All right, and the next one is stop button, which is, oh, it's the same size. That's nice. That's a nice change. All right, still 9 by 10. 186 plus 9 from the size before it is 195. 213 becomes 222. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get one of these numbers off by one because I can't do basic math at this time of night. And somebody's going to be watching this at home and just screaming at their uh, YouTube window. But I'm sorry, if I screw this up, we'll know in a moment when I run it, right? All right, so... What do we got next? Literally the next button. Scooch on over. There you go. Next button is gigantic. What is that? Oops, where'd you go? Come back here. I'm only human, though. You know what I'm saying? All right. 11 by 10, so you are two more. I like how these are all just slightly different. Last one was 9, so we're at 9 to this, so 204. 230. 31. Yeah, and then 231. Okay, we're almost there. Almost there. Let's get this guy real quick here. What are you? The eject button. The eject button is helpfully smaller again. Okay, love it. 10 by 10. So we add 11 to this, so this becomes. 215, 242, 242, 242, okay, cool, and now this last thing, let me get rid of this now, we got all the new buttons, we gotta get that one slider in there, so let me get the thousand arguments for this so I can take notes. Okay, we got, let's see. Good lord. This thing is... This is the thing we're talking about now, is this guy right here. It's a very, very small slider. It is a whopping 17 pixels across. Believe it or not, you can actually operate on this with a mouse. You wouldn't guess it. Okay, 17 by 7. So. 7... The destination on this guy is, yeah, should have done that first. All right. There we go. Okay. Destination is twenty-seven by twenty-nine. Twenty by twenty-nine. Um, the knob is interesting. It works a little differently on this, so let's fill those magic numbers in. The knob is... I read the readme. That's why I know this. This thing right here is the knob. Looks weird in the atlas, because they're trying to show you something here. Alright, this goes over here. That means there's overlap. Okay, so, did I get the whole thing? I think I did. Yeah, okay. Um, so the knob actually has three parts to it. So you don't want this whole icon here. You actually just want a third of it. So you can see our little guidelines down here. So each of these are the same size, but let me scroll over a little more so you can see. This is going to be the actual background of the slider. And when 
the knob is in this colored box, it uses this piece of the graphic. When it's in the middle, it uses this. And when it's in this, it uses this. So you gotta pick which third of this you want. They're all the same size, I think. Yep, yep, they're all the same size. They're all three by seven. So rather than say the knob is this whole thing, we're gonna say the knob is three by seven. And we'll just call the source position. There isn't a press and unpressed for this, so we'll just call the source position this guy right here. 17 by 36. 17, 36. We did that, and then 17, 36 again. Can't type. There we go. Um, number of frames is one. There is no animation in this. And the frame offset, we're going to draw from this thing, not from the thing on the title bar. So it's going to be zero and whatever this is. Offset is 36. Zero and 36. And the frame width is whatever I said this was before. Seven. No. 17. And the frame height is 7, but it does not change. 7, and a bunch of crud over here we don't care about, so let's chop all these out. And the initial value we'll just call 0, .0 like because this is supposed to be the position in the song, so we'll just start at the beginning of the song, 0. Okay, if I did all that right, we should have two user interfaces set up to render, but we only render one of them, so let's deal with that real quick. Uh, draw frame? Yeah, okay. This is where we draw the window every frame. So we're going to make a couple of changes into this. Let's see here. Um, which is good, because this is ugly and it's been driving me nuts. So let's deal with that. All right, source rect, these numbers are always the same. It's this one that changes, depending on which of these title bars, this guy, this guy, this guy, or this guy. Everything else is basically the same. You just gotta know what your Y coordinate is that changes and draw from there. So let's put all of these into something a little more compact. Equals 27, zero. We'll set this at a moment. We'll set to zero here until we decide which title bar we need. Um, mm, 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 275 and 14 and just like look at all this cruft that's about to evaporate out of here. Goodbye. Love it. Cool has focus. We're going to need this information in a moment, so let's go ahead and get it right here. I need that information too. Window flags and focus. We'll call that steel true, otherwise a steel false. Good enough for now. Um, this is just me being anal with this thing here. We don't usually don't have to specify this, but um, we just clean that up in SDL3 to work more like you expect a boolean to. It's not going to be an enumeration anymore. Or I think we cleaned that up. It's coming up if we haven't. All right, but we need to know that, so we put it into a bool that we can look at in a moment. And destination rect, we're going to need two, but I'm not ready for that yet, so let's just blah, blah, blah like that. Okay. These two things are here. We need that I, I guess, so let's keep that. So I'm talking to myself a little, which I guess is kind of the point of this stream. All right, so always want to clear the thing to, ba uh, to black just you know so we have a definite starting point where everything is sane even if we plan on drawing over the whole window never hurts to clear it before you go okay um now if skin wind shade mode if we're in wind shade mode we want to do something different than if we're in main window mode so um in that case the source rect we want to decide which of these bars we're going with here so uh, source rect y equals okay and if we have focus uh, if we have the focus we want it to be if we're in wind shade mode we want it to be this guy right here what are you what position are you in I think I got that right I get it yeah okay uh, so that's position 28 no, that's the X. We want the Y. It's position 29. If we have the focus. If we don't have the focus, 
It's position 42. Uh, fun, fun Winamp bug fact for you. Uh, between this top window shade one and this bottom one, uh, they have an off by one error in Winamp. So when you draw the active one, this line in the bitmap is the bottom line of your title bar. But when you're not focused, since they have an off by one bug, it's the top uh, line of pixels in your unfocused title bar. Um, it's a bug. It's always existed in Winamp. That's why it says read the readme here, and that's why they have this big thing. that says shared line bug right here. Now you know. <clears throat> okay, good. Let's see. Okay, so in windshade mode, we know to draw this or this, depending on whether we have focus, and failing that, if we are not in windshade mode, else same question, except it was 0 or 15, like we had already figured out before up here. Cool. So that'll give us the right one of those. And then we need to... Well, that's not going to do it for me. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. We're going to put some more stuff in here. That can go there. We're going to copy a different thing here. Yeah, okay, so um, actually we don't want to copy that at all because we want to, if, if we're in windshade mode, the first thing, first and only thing we want to draw is the title bar. If we're not, we want to draw the main texture first, and then we'll draw the title bar over top of it, as we did before. Now we don't need this anymore because we have already set up source wrecked. Look at that, all the crud going away. And the destination wrecked is the same for either of these title bars, so we can just do this. Const stealrect destract equals zero zero two seven five fourteen. Yeah, I mean it's less yuck, so we'll just do that. Okay. Destract X is wrong. Let me clean that out real quick here. We don't need this anymore. Okay, good. So now we draw the right thing. I'm going to throw this in here too, although we're not getting this to this tonight. I just want to skin wind shade. No, sorry. Easter egg mode. And I'm just going to fix me right this, just so I remember to do this later. Because, you know, it's fun. But we're not getting that tonight. That's just an idea for later. Because we're just going to... Easter egg mode is just pick a different Y coordinate. So you draw a different title bar and everyone's happy with it. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So draw the title bar. Draw the main window if you need to before that. Draw the title bar at the right place. Uh, and then we have to draw the right buttons here. So let's do that. So um, we have the nice thing here that, you know, Buttons and windshade buttons. Just which set of these you want to use. Let's put these a little like that. Okay. Uh, it's just a question of uh, get a point or two the array you want. So let's go deal with that real quick. Um, win amps. Yeah, I just jumped away without looking. It's win amp skin button is the name of this thing. Win amp skin button pointer buttons equals what's this thing called skin windshade mode. If we're in windshade mode, we want skin windshade windshader buttons. Otherwise, we want just regular old boring buttons. Now, these are arrays when you uh, arrays and see dither down to pointers, so you can just say, I have a pointer to it, give me the array you want. It becomes a pointer, everyone's happy. Const int number of buttons. If we're in windshade mode, we want steel array size, which is a magic macro that will tell you how many elements are in a static array. So you don't have to do any kind of magic math to figure that out. Check, check. Okay. Uh, we also have sliders. Skin slider. Call it sliders like that. Now we only have one windshade position slider. 
Well, if one of those is throwing a dress thing on that, otherwise we can just do sliders like that. And that array will dither down to a pointer, so you come to the same thing. Uh, and num sliders, same thing. Now, you might notice that I'm just checking this over and over again. Like, we could put this all in one single conditional block in one if uh, statement and set these up, but it ends up being multiple lines of code that it's, it's, I like it being compact like this. Your mileage may vary. I hope the compiler's smart enough to figure out this thing hasn't changed and not check it four times, but we'll just have to see. <clears throat> I feel like a, my voice is giving out. I sound like a heavy smoker or something right now, so I'm sorry if this is a little more gravelly than normal. Maybe it sounds fine. I don't know. All right. Um, so we have those things. So now we draw our title bar, our window behind if we need it, and then we want to go through here instead of checking this down here. Say num buttons and draw, yeah, buttons like that. So now we're drawing the buttons, and let's do it for this too before I forget. Num sliders, sliders i. Okay, cool. Now, regardless of which mode we're in, it's drawing the correct buttons and the correct sliders or slider, and then it renders. And theoretically, that should give us most of what we need. Uh, okay, you know what? I just forgot one thing we need to set up here. Um, where was this guy here? I talked about this, that you get different parts of this knob for this thing over here. So we have to make one little adjustment for this slider here. Where are we at? Where are we at? Um, okay, so you have a knob button in here in the slider. And it has, it looks like this. Let me just grab these things real quick so I can look at these down here where we're drawing the frame. So we set up that. Okay, so this goes, I don't care about the click function here. The desk direct is not what we need because we're going to set that up elsewhere. Um, oh, the desk direct didn't change for that. It's the knob we need. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So what we need to know then is, depending on where in the slider we are, the source track needs to change so that we get the correct piece of this knob, depending on where we are in the thing. So what we want to do is say, okay, if... Wait, no, we need to say const int it's called pixel position equals. All right, so sliders have, where'd you go? There you go, the value, which I think if I didn't screw this up or if I'm remembering correctly, the value is from zero to one, zero being all the way at the left, one being all the way at the right. So it would be, what is that thing called? Wind skin, wind shade, position slider yeah value um, and we want to multiply that by you know we'll just for the sake of things we'll just do what they call it slider there it is frame width is what they call that okay frame width so that should give you depending on the value, somewhere between zero and the width of the thing. And one, yeah, okay, that's fine, I guess. We're, we're gonna be off by one, since one of these goes to zero, zero based, but that's fine for now. We'll deal with that. Okay, so we have the current, ah, stop. We have the current position of the slider multiply it by the width so you end up with the pixel position that the knob should draw at. And then I guess what we can do is say well it's gonna, the, the rendering code for the slider is gonna deal with clamping that knob so we don't have to worry about that here. All we care about is which part of the thing we're in. So let's say if pixel position is less than, uh, okay, where are we here? This guy right here. So if we're in this first part that's blue, let me zoom in a little here. Make sure all the way over, okay. If we're in this dude, 
So if the, the value of this is less than, it's seven across, so if it's less than seven, so it's zero to six, less than seven, yeah, okay. Then we want, what did I call this thing? Did I lose it? Skin slider, position slider, ah, oh, come back, position slider knob, and then it was, yeah, okay. Texture either. Source wrecked. Unpressed. This is becoming quite a mouthful, isn't it? Pressed X. Oof, look at that. That's a lot. Equals zero. Is that right? Yeah, because you want it to, to start. It covers, it covers the whole thing. We're not going to change the width and height. We already set those. We want to start there. And then if we're in the middle section, we want to start here. So it's just that X value is changing. X equals zero. Else, if pixel position is less than this guy over here, which would be, oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Pixel position is less than, we did this, which is less than seven, yeah. And then over here, if it's less than 10, because this is only three pixels across, huh? all right. It's less than 10, then we can do this guy x is three. I have the wrong position for this, I'm gonna fix that too. Position is 17, and then 20, and then 23. 17. 20, and then this is just a big old else. Everything else will give it the other end of the bar. Okay. Um, and of course, we need to set this for the pressed version of this too. But, you know, let's just set it like that. So one copies to the other, no matter what. That is such a mouthful right there. But what are you going to do? Okay. So that always gets set correctly. As we, as that position thing changes, we'll use the right part of the knob. That's Easter egg mode. We'll forget about that for now. These things can go. Okay, a lot of, a lot of code got written here. Let's see. When shade mode is that and that. Gosh, I don't know. We wrote all this thing. Let's see if it. What are the chances this is going to work on the first try? Let's find out. Well, obviously, it didn't compile on the first try. Wind shade. Position slider, what do I call it up here? Wind shape sliders. I missed the S there. That was probably what did me in. Yep, okay. I guess let's see if it runs. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, SDL amp. Oh lord, I'm nervous. Hang on. Let's see me. SDL amp. Oh well, we crashed, so that's a good start. Why did we crash? Render to a texture that is probably null. Or bogus in some way. Slider texture. No, thanks. I is three. See what I did here. Slider total, there's two of them. We were doing this already, right? So if it's three, that would probably be a problem, right? Because zero and one, how do we get to three? What happened here? I bet I know what happened. I don't know, num sliders is... I is zero, I is less than num sliders. What do we set this to up here? For windshield minus one. Oh, mm hmm, yep. Cut and paste error. Tisk, tisk. There. Now it's actually going to have the right size for that. All right. There, it doesn't crash anymore. That's nice. Okay. So, 
this here, blah, blah, blah. Here comes windshade mode. Oh, I love it when things work on the first try. That's good. And that high, that, that's not hooked up. We screwed that up somehow. Minimize still works, though. All right, let's go figure out why that doesn't see that button. And windshade. Text title bar, windshade buttons, windshade. Nine nine. And now we're pulling these up again. All right, hold on. But it works so well up there. Okay, width and height is nine nine. I believe that's right. Destination should be ten past. No, wait. Oh yeah, because I think there's a gap between the buttons. Yeah, there's a little gap. Okay. So, 10 past it. Is that three down? Just while I'm here. One, two, three. Okay, that's in the right place. 256. That's probably right. That's probably right. The source is 027 and 927. That's actually probably not right. Let me see. Zero twenty-seven, and then oh wait, no. Well, yeah, that would be the right position. Then nine. Okay, so that that's probably right. Did I do something stupid? Possibly. Nine twenty-seven. That should be right. Oh, wait, hang on. No, I'm dumb. Destination is not 256. 254. Well, actually, yeah, that's probably right. Hmm. Okay, I don't know. Let me run that again. Let me take a look at that one more time. She clicked. That should set it back to its full size. Nothing quite like watching me debug this. I just want to be like, cool, it works, right? All right, so here's this dude right here. Windshade mode. Definitely went to windshade mode. That's good. Minimize works. Why is this not coming out of windshade mode? Hmm. I definitely screwed something up here, because these are all registering this, but this is not registering them clicking on it. So I clearly screwed something up. Let's see if the play button works, just while we're, or the whatever button works. Oh, well, here's an interesting bug. Okay, hang on. That might be part of our problem right there. Hit testing. Is expecting you. Oh, I know what else is probably wrong with this, too. Okay, well, we'll deal with that in a second. Hit testing is only concerned with the main buttons. So let's try to fix this up a little bit. So let's say if we're in less than 14, you know, if we're in the title bar, then do stuff. Otherwise, we'll treat everything as normal, like just clicks go through. Nothing magic about the mouse. Click. Okay, so, oops, stop. So if we're in a title bar, make sure we're not in a button. Let's get these things here. Fix me, we'll do this next time because we're running late now. So fix me, code duplication. Yep. Uh, buttons. Okay, so this tells if we're in a title, make sure we're not in a button or a slider. And that'll, yeah, okay, so for i equals zero, we care about all the buttons now because we're only checking inside the title bar. 
i is less than num buttons i plus plus so an int for that right int i. did i have one of those already i don't know whatever fine um if the point is in buttons and this is not skin like this anymore skin like this now So if it is in the button, then it's we're in a button, don't drag from the buttons. Okay, and then we'll do the same for sliders. Now this is actually testing for more things. Like we could probably cut this down a bit and say if we're in wind shade mode, check for all this. Otherwise. slider because I mean you'll never ever be in a slider in the title bar unless you're in windshade mode but for now we're just gonna accept it everything else in the title bar yeah. treat as a window drag cool 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 and then that I like that a little better I was complaining about inverting this before now it's like this cool I like that. Um, let's look for other places we use the word buttons. I have a suspicion. All right, so we did all of these. We draw these, that's a thing. Uh, we also check for it here, okay. Uh, this needs to check a specific thing. Sigh, okay. Should want to call this thing. Let's get this down here too, since we're looking for buttons right now. Again, we're running late, so I'm just copying and pasting. But we'll we'll clean this up next time. For windshield mode. Okay, so blah blah blah. All right. If it, if we don't have a press button, then we want to go through all the buttons available to us in the mode we're in. And do that. And if we're in there, then it becomes that. Okay. And then the same thing over here for sliders. And I'll do that. Okay, so it'll actually react to the correct thing. And these things don't care about that, I think. Mouse motion, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's see where we are with that. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Skin is a pointer. Oh, here we go with this again. Okay. Um, definitely need to clean this up. It's making my skin crawl just a little bit already. Let's see. Does that fix it? Yes, okay. Does it work? Okay, we get to windshade mode. Oh, and now I can leave windshade mode. Okay, because I can actually see the button I'm supposed to be touching here. Yep, that's nice. There you go, we hop between the two. And you can see the little logging I put in here is coming through now. So, windshade, unwindshade. So these buttons probably work now too. There it goes, okay, good. This is not actually hooked up. Okay, we're going to deal with that later, it's fine. We don't even have a slider that works here right now, so. Um, I should have drawn something, though, right? Oh, uh, well, you know, we'll deal with that later. It does not matter right now. Okay, so there you go. We have windshade mode. Now you can have a very, very tiny window, in case you want to play some MP3s up here and not take up any screen real estate with it. That's pretty cool. We'll fix that next time. I can see that's already wrong. Um, and you can go back and forth as you want to, which is pretty cool, and you can do this and oh. oh that's interesting it doesn't actually move that knob until you know what we're already at 49 minutes i'm gonna fix that real quick because i already know how to fix that um i don't know if you saw when i clicked on the 
the slider, it didn't actually move the knob until I moved the mouse. So let's just go fix that super fast. Handle slider motion is what we do there. When you first do, uh, when it first decides in mouse button down, if you're got a new slider, let's just say when you press it, we'll just uh, handle slider motion on this slider right now to the point we are in. So that should fix that right there just while we're flying through things here. Oops. That was already a pointer, does not need to be an address to a pointer. There we go. All right, let's see if that worked real quick. Yep, and now when you click, you don't have to move, it jumps to where you are. You can still slide it, and that still works, but it will doesn't wait for you to move the mouse to pop it over. All right, so holy moly, what a breakneck speed we went through on this one. Um, we're at 50 minutes. It's definitely time to stop. This went longer than I thought it would, but... Um, I kind of, you know, I I was worried that if I left this half done, we would be in, you know, the next video would be like, here's another 20 minute video where we do, you know, just a couple more buttons in the windshield. I just wanted to have this done as much as we can have things done right now so we can make our way through this. And there you go. You have the world's smallest MP3 player right here. Mm, love it. All right, stop. All right, then those buttons all work. That's great. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so let's get rid of this to wrap up real quick. What did we do today? Add a windshade button. Hooked up the whole windshade interface right here. Lots and lots of code about that. Uh, add some code duplication we're going to clean up next time. Uh, got the hit testing working with the new stuff. Got um, the buttons we did there. Hooked up windshade mode. Hooked up all the UI, which is a bunch of math for things. Fixed it so that we can draw this correctly between the different modes. Um, fixed it so that it does the right thing when you click, when, when you interact with it, 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 the UI from the user works correctly as well as drawing it back. So that's it, and that's windshade mode. We did the whole thing. All right, we're at 52 minutes. Uh, this has been very successful at 237 lines of diff, which is like, you know, is the whole program so that was like you know changed like a third of the program but when you think about how much this program is doing now even though we have a long way to go we're still under 700 lines of code that's not so bad so um i'm feeling pretty good about this all right i know this is like your whole lunch break now here guys that you did this for 52 minutes 53 minutes with me so uh thanks for it we'll see you next time we'll do some other fun part of this all right take care